Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel. If this is the first time you're visiting with us, I want to extend to you a very warm welcome. If you have been here before, welcome back. Today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. So we're planning to have a, a fun build like we usually plan on, on weekends for you guys. But then this happened. So today we woke up in this wonderland for North Carolina. I'm not sure how common this is. This is the first time we had that much snow ever since we moved here. So we don't have enough uh, time in North Carolina to know if that's uh, something that happens periodically or not, but this is the first time for us. So we had to change plans. Because uh, it is very difficult for us to shoot, our, our soap is not very well heated and it is rather small. We cannot really do any big projects there right now. That's why we're usually using the deck, right? Mm -hmm. It will be extremely difficult for us to do a project today. So instead, thanks to Mother Nature, we're going to talk about common uh, DIY projects around the house, how to do them, the knowledge you need to have, and we'll try to focus on things that you don't need any tools or many tools to, to be successful with. One of the most annoying and probably easiest things to fix in your household is a flickering light. So today we're going to, the first thing we're going to discuss is how to address, how to troubleshoot and how to fix a flickering light in your house. <clears throat> For the last several days, this light feature has driven us insane because it has been flickering. So the plan was for me to show you how to fix a flickering light. And we're going to still do that, but for some reason, our light has fixed itself. It does not flicker anymore. So I guess solution number one is wait and see what happens. <laughs> it's really not a solution. <clears throat> what I'm going to tell you applies to both uh, incandescent bulbs and LED bulbs. These happen to be LED, they are Edison lamps, <clears throat> but there are many reasons why a light fixture might start flicker. First of all, you need to pay attention to see if it is the whole fixture that flickers or one specific light, right? This fixture has three lights, and in our case, only one light was flickering, right? Mm -hmm. That takes away from the likelihood that it is a wiring problem or something more serious with the systemic to the house, right? because if it was a wiring issue, all three lights would flicker, not one. Mm -hmm. So we know it is an issue with one light. This is something that can be very, very simple to fix. One of them is that through the on and off cycles of the lights, the light bulb has walked a little bit loose and uh, it is not making perfect uh, connection and that's why it flickers, right? The solution to that is very simple. You simply tighten the bulb. The other reason that might be flickering is because the light bulb itself is bad. And here the troubleshooting is uh, very similar to how you will troubleshoot a car that had a missing uh, cylinder, uh, misfiring cylinder, not a missing. <laughs> car with a missing cylinder. That would, would be, be interesting, very, wouldn't it? Very interesting, however. So what you do is you, you take the bulb after you tighten it and it doesn't fix the problem. It start doing it a little bit, but I don't know if it is even visible in your own. Uh, you take the bulb and you put it on another position. In other words, you switch two bulbs, right? Mm -hmm. If the problem stays with the original position, you know the problem was not the bulb. If it moves, you know the problem was the bulb. Mm -hmm. So that is the step number two. Step number one is again, tighten the bulb, right? right. And if it feels loose, that, you know that was the problem. <clears throat> now, if the problem follows the bulb, uh, you know that you have a bad bulb and you need to replace it. Might not look anything physically wrong with it, but you will need to replace the bulb. There is no other solution around it, right? Okay. So we're trying to uh, capture the light. It does flicker, but it doesn't flicker very frequently, right? Mm -hmm. Yesterday it was driving us crazy. Today it just driving us crazy for different reasons. Maybe if we should just sit down at the table because it likes to flicker when we're sitting at the table. So when we're talking about flickering, 
you're going to see flickering that it is kind of normal in uh, fluorescent lamps, right? Fluorescent lights have a tendency to flicker. Mm -hmm. If they over flicker, they're also failing, right? But a level of flickering is normal in fluorescent lights. Incandescent and LED lights are not supposed to flicker. Mm -hmm. So when they are flickering, that's something you have to troubleshoot and address. So you can see it's starting to flicker a little bit here. So in our case, our bulb was loose. And if you wonder why the bulbs get loose, it's because they, they get hot and cold, hot and cold, right? Mm -hmm. And that can work with bulbs a little loose. This is not a very uncommon thing. It is much more common if you have incandescent lights. Mm -hmm. But clearly with LEDs is, is also a likelihood. So this can be an easy fix. But even if you have to, to move it to another position and find out it's your light, that's still easy to fix, right? You just buy a new light bulb. Mm -hmm. Not your light, your light bulb. Right. Another issue that is very common is not having power into a receptacle or into a whole room. Electrical problems in your house without any special equipment. This, for example, is a one dollar lamp from the dollar store, right? Mm -hmm. And this can show you if a, a circuit is live or not. One of the important things that you have to do as a homeowner is to know which part of your house is controlled by what circuit on your circuit breaker box, right? Mm -hmm. The first step, of course, is to go and see if it is labeled when you just purchase the house. And if it is not, you have to spend some time and label it. In order to do that, you simply go and plug this into a room, right? Mm -hmm. Into a room. Oh, be hard into to plug into a room. Into an outlet of the room. Into an outlet. Uh, turn the switch is off until this comes off, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure the lamp is on. Yeah, that, that would be ideal. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be an interesting uh, exercise, right? Right. So this chip device can help you know where the circuit is and if the circuit is, is on or off, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Many times, the other thing that you will need to know is if your circuit anywhere in its path has a, a GFCI uh, plug, no plug. Outlet. Outlet. Mm -hmm. uh, a GFCI outlet will control not only itself, but any other outlet connect to it. So it can connect 10, 15 different plugs, right? Mm -hmm. And in the case of this house, those plugs controlled by our G GFCI are all over the house, right? Okay, and let's just talk about what is a GFCI outlet. It's a ground four circuit interrupt outlet. Mm -hmm. It is an outlet that it is uh, mandated by code in wet areas. And by wet areas, we mean bathrooms and, and kitchens and outside. Mm -hmm. Areas that the, the circuit can actually get wet, physically mm -hmm. wet. And the purpose is? To prevent you from getting electrocuted because mm -hmm. uh, water, uh, like you're taking a shower or you're shaving right. or something, uh, connected to the, the power. It and is then, a safety device. Mm -hmm. And so then it cuts <coughs> the power to that device as well as anything in the chain that it's connected to, correct? correct? And, and the problem is the chain. Again, in this house, uh, we had a problem where we didn't have power somewhere. I think they were outside, uh, I think they were outside receptacles, right? Mm -hmm. And they were actually tied to the GFCI in our main bathroom. Which is quite a distance away. Well, not only this, it doesn't make much sense because they right. were outside the receptacles and that was an inside right. receptacle. But in any case, so if you cannot find a tripped, where I'm getting this, if you cannot find a tripped uh, fuse, Mm -hmm. But you do not have power to more than one receptacle. It's a different story if it's only one, right? Mm -hmm. If you have no power in more than one receptacle, there is a high likelihood that that circuit is controlled by GFCI. Mm -hmm. like, and those are easy to identify. We're going to show you what they look like. Okay. We will specifically focus on GFCI outlets because very commonly are the source of really making your part of your house lose power without tripping your breakers or blowing your fuses, depending on what you have. So this is what a standard uh, plug looks like. It looks like a smiley face. It usually has two receptacles mm -hmm. and you find them throughout your house, right? Right. And here's what the GFCI looks like. One you can see the immediate difference is that there are two buttons here, right? Mm -hmm. And there is a light there. Now in this specific one, when it trips, this light turns red and you're going to see that one of those two lights will be actually out, right? The buttons come out. 
Right. One of them is called test. I cannot read from here. Can yep. you read? Is yep. that the test? Yep. And the other is called reset, right? Mm -hmm. So the test does exactly what you say. It's going to trip the GFCI. And that is probably the easiest way to know what it controls, right? Okay. The other is, again, self-explanatory. It resets. If it is tripped, you press that to, to restore power, right? Mm -hmm. Now, there are other types. Sometimes you have two lights. Mm -hmm. And uh, green means that it is powered. And then there is another red that means that it is tripped, right? So mm -hmm. there are different types. I'll try to find a couple of pictures of different types and put them up in the corner here. And some will have like a little red button. Right, but they look essentially the same though. I mean, right. this is... And they do the same thing. Right, They're, they work identical. In this case, this one controls, of course, the area here. It controls our other bathroom and it controls all the outside uh, receptacles. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of... Unusual for a house to have a singular GFCI. It's well, controlling, really. controlling all of that. Well, everything is unusual about the electrician that wired this right. specific house. Uh, I would say that each wet room should have a GFCI, mm -hmm. and then an outside one of the outside receptacles should be GFCI. Independent from right. the interior. Uh, mm -hmm. But the electrician that uh, wired this house chose to put everything on one GFCI. Right. I assume that meets code. I don't know for a fact, but mm -hmm. I assume this meets code. It definitely does what it's supposed to do, and that is interrupt power if it gets wet, mm -hmm. if any of those get wet, right? Okay. The problem with that is that you might lose power in a room, mm -hmm. but you have to go to another room to find out how to reset it. Because the normal thing is you lose power, you go to your uh, uh, fuse box, right? Mm -hmm. And you find no flow or blown fuses. Or breakers. Breakers, like unless fuses, you have yeah. an, they are a little bit different. Maybe we should talk about that too. Um, well, fuses are in very, very old houses. I mean, right. Even older than our house. Right. And they're usually, uh, you Circular. can screw them on. They kind know? of look like a little piece of a light bulb because you screw them right. into the piece. And, mm -hmm. and when they are blown, you have to replace them. Right. Breakers very rarely fail that you have to replace, but they trip and you mm -hmm. just have to reset them. And they, they function a little bit like a light switch, meaning they they move back and forth. Um, so if it's tripped, it'll be to one side and you just flip it back in the same way you would turn a light switch on or off. But they're just <clears throat> right. horizontal <clears throat> instead of vertical. And they control full circuits. Like right. in this room, we found out that the, the receptacles are controlled by different breakers, but all the lights are in one breaker, mm -hmm. which actually I like because that means that you can work in a room in something and you've cut the power but you still have power to, to turn a lamp on or something to see, mm -hmm. right? So if, if we're working on the fan, we can still have a lamp to, work, to, to work plug on in, it. to plug into the outlet. Right, or, or if we, when we're working in, in adding uh, receptacles, you can have the light on to see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. so, so that is an advantage, but you need to know. But if you go, if you don't have power to more than one receptacle and you have no tripped breaker, chances are that circuit is on a GFCI. Okay. And then you need to find your GFCI. It is a good idea, in fact, when you buy a new house to go around and know where your GFCI outlets are. Because that will make your life easier when you have a failure, right? Mm -hmm. Any questions come to your mind, Elpida? Uh, just those that I've been saying along, but nothing right now. If you do not have a GFCI in a wet area, your house does not meet electrical code, current electrical code. It is mandated, right? Mm -hmm. Or a GFCI controlling that area. Right. Again, it doesn't have to be in the room. Mm -hmm. But it, the room has to be GFCI protected. Right. An easy way to identify a three-way switch is that the two-way switch or a standard switch that turns on and off a single appliance, a single device or a single light will have the words off and on written on it. So as you see, this is off and this is on. In contrast, three-way switches have nothing. They are smooth. There is no writing on them. So that is the easiest way to identify three-way switches. A, a three-way, which means that you can turn it on and off here and on and off on another location. This is very common on living in living rooms, right? Mm -hmm. In our house, it's common in our living room and in our kitchen. I don't know for whatever reason it is. They really like three-way switches. Mm -hmm. And in wiring a three-way switch, you're going to find an extra wire, which in the U.S. is red. Okay. That goes within the switches and allows the switches to know which switch is controlling which, which is the device, right? Okay. Now, if, if one of those fail, there is a good chance that nothing will work. 
because they will stop communicating in one of those switches is what I mean, you know? Mm -hmm. And the third type will be a dimmer switch. A dimmer switch allows you to control the, the value of electricity you allow through the switch, and it does what it implies, right? It dims usually lights. Mm -hmm. You don't want to put a dimmer switch in other devices as a matter of rule, you know? Right. Uh, most every switch can be replaced with an, another switch unless you don't have the wiring for a three-way switch, right? There are also four-way switches that are a little more complex and they're a little more rare. I think very often you find two or three-way switches in stairs, on the top of the stair and the bottom of the stair. Right. So mm -hmm. you can turn the lights on and off, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the disadvantage, I think, of a three-way switch is, as you can see here, the lights that this control are both off, but mm -hmm. they're opposite, right? Because it really depends what the other switch, the position that the other right. switch is. So it can be misleading if you... So Aren't on and off, the house, right? on and off becomes irrelevant, and that's why there is no writing on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, friends, and this is our short episode for today. Again, we made this episode because we did not want to not post something this weekend, but the weather really prevents us to make from making, not to make, from making a, a, a good build. In any case, we think that the information we provided you is good information. Do let us know if you agree or disagree. In fact, even LP that didn't know one of detail that we discussed today, which, uh, you know, if LP that didn't know it, imagine who else might not. Right, right. right. You know, it, it, it's significant. In any case, we hope you enjoyed it. It was a fun little episode for us. What do you think, LP I think it was good information. And if you did, we'll appreciate the thumbs up. If you didn't, smack the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know what else you might want to watch in future, future episodes of the Urban Homesteading Channel. From Dr. Wizard, Miss Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Homesteading Channel, stay safe, put your masks on, wash your hands, keep your distance, and get, get vaccinated. So we're going to see you in our next episode. Farewell, friends.